Hey, what's up guys? Joker here, and today we have got a couple of news stories to get through in the world of tech. First up, we will be talking about Intel and their XE series of graphics cards, which everyone has been awaiting with bated breath to come out and are expected to release in the year 2020. But just how competitive Intel will be with AMD and NVIDIA in the high-end and the mid-range space remains to be seen. But now we've actually got a statement from Raja Kadori in an interview on just what price points they're going to be going after in the year 2020 and when we can expect them to see them being competitive at the higher end. And also, we got the big Call of Duty Modern Warfare reveal yesterday where it was confirmed that it will have cross-platform play. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how that is actually going to work and give my thoughts and opinions on it. But first, today's video is brought to you by LevelGo.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for under $16, Microsoft Office 2019 for $80, and Microsoft Office 2016 for under $40. And if you use my coupon codes at checkout, you can save an additional 22% off of Windows 10 Pro or 16% off of any software you pick up over there, or now you can get 3% off of the entire website with the code PDS3 at checkout. So be sure to use these coupon codes with the links down in the description below. So first up, as I said, we're going to be talking about Raja Ghadori, formerly of AMD and the Radeon Technologies Group, who, as most of you know, if you follow my channel for now, for a while, uh, Raja left AMD uh, ceremoniously about a little over a year ago and went to Intel to help them with their dedicated graphics, which I think many people are excited to see so that we have a third company out there in the mix competing with AMD and NVIDIA for the GPU space and they're expected to have graphics going all the way from integrated graphics all the way through dedicated and high-end and all the way all the way up all the way up to the data center and we've got some information thanks to an interview done by the YouTube channel Pro High Tech which was uploaded onto their YouTube channel unfortunately it was uh, dubbed in Russian as it is a Russian YouTube channel, but it's a pretty popular channel. I actually had uh, the pleasure of meeting the host of this interview uh, about two years ago at an Acer Press event. Very nice guy whose name actually escapes me right now, uh, and I couldn't find the name of the interviewer here. Uh, but he was a nice guy, and he definitely does speak fluid English, as does Raja Kadori. So I'm sure this interview was done in English, but then it was dubbed after the fact in Russian for Pro High Tech's viewers. And uh, if Pro High Tech happens to see this, and also I posted a comment in the video, I really hope that they do upload the entire interview in English as well so that everyone can enjoy because it. it's about 32 minutes long and it seems to be chock full of a lot of information on things like ray tracing, why Raja left AMD, and of course about the upcoming Intel XE GPUs and what those are going to entail. But thankfully a uh, Redditor actually went ahead and translated some of what was said during this interview concerning the Intel XE GPUs and what we can expect to see with them. And really the big takeaway from it is that initially at least in the year 2020, uh, Intel is not going to be going after the high end. They're only really going to be going after around the $200 price point initially. And it actually is going to be a couple of years after the fact until we actually start seeing them competitive at the high end, which is kind of disappointing to me. I'll go ahead and read you the exact quote from over on the r slash hardware subreddit where uh, the Redditor actually got ahead and translated what Raja said in this interview. So around the 6 minute and 15 second mark, Raja had this to say, Our strategy revolves around price, not performance. First, our GPUs for everyone at $200 price, then the same architecture but with the higher amount of HBM memory for data centers, and our strategy in two to three years is to release the whole family of GPUs from integrated graphics and popular discrete graphics to data center GPUs. So really what we get from that is that it's going to be another two to three years, probably after the year 2020, when the first lineup of cards released at the $200 price point. So we're not looking until around the year 2022 to the year 2023 until they're actually competitive with AMD and Nvidia, which I think for some people is probably going to be disappointing. It definitely is for me. I was hoping that this would happen sooner rather than later, but they'll at least be competitive at the sort of like the budget uh, low end at $200. And we'll get to see at least what their architecture can do. It does sound from this like they are going to continue to use the same architecture through different generations and also kind of an odd takeaway from this is that they are going to be using HBM memory which is just like remnants of that has Raja written all over it and it does seem counterintuitive that they are going after a budget price point and then they're using HBM memory which is much more expensive has much lower yields so yeah it definitely seems to kind of go against each other they're having a budget card using high bandwidth memory so I don't really know what Intel's thinking there I guess we'll just have to wait until the year 2020 to see how it all pans out for them. 
And the Redditor did also mention one other thing that came out of this interview regarding ray tracing, and it does seem that the first iteration of Intel's GPUs will not have dedicated ray tracing blocks, so it doesn't seem like they're going after that initially, probably in the year 2020 at $200 but two to, two to three years down the line, we'll have to wait and see what they actually do there. And they'll probably go after ray tracing at that time. But if you were hoping in the year 2020 to pick up a high-end Intel GPU that competed with the likes of Nvidia and AMD, what's the only people they really can compete with, then uh, yeah, you're probably gonna be disappointed by this news. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on this if this is something you expected to see. I would definitely love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on it. Next up, I wanted to talk about Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which I covered yesterday in a leak about having cross-platform play, but then they got the big reveal just a couple hours later. Actually, it was kind of revealed like right as the video that I posted was actually going live. Um, so yeah, they actually revealed during the event that it is going to support cross-platform play between consoles and the PCs, which is a good thing on paper for PC players as the lobbies tend to be pretty empty on the PC weeks and months after the games have actually launched and you can't really get into a lot of the game modes and I had hoped that the cross-platform play um, would help with that but now it seems like that might not help as much as we had initially thought because of how it's going to work so if you had dreams and aspirations of just being able to jump into any lobby with a mouse and keyboard and play against someone that was using a controller on the other end, then then probably 95% of the time or more, that is going to not be the case as console players will actually have to opt in to play with PC players that are using a mouse and keyboard. Now, if you're a PC player using a controller, you can automatically, you will go into controller versus controller lobbies and mouse and keyboard players will play against mouse and keyboard players, whether they're on the PC or on the Xbox One, which does support mouse and keyboard in this game. So that is basically how it's going to work. It's going to be peripheral based lobbies. So yeah, if you were hoping to just get in there and wreck noobs on a controller, then that's probably not going to happen unless the players do opt in. Now, initially, my thought right away was like, well, what's going to stop me from, you know, plugging in a controller and then joining into a lobby and then just instantly start using my mouse and keyboard? Because you can pretty much usually use that in most games. You can, I could be, like, I've done that in Battlefield before where I've, I will play with mouse and keyboard, but then I'll get into an airplane, let's say, and I'll switch to using my controller because I just find it better to control the airplanes uh, using a joypad. So I will go ahead and switch over to using that and it'll already be plugged in and ready to go. So I thought, well, what's gonna stop me from joining with a controller plugged in and then just putting it down and uh, playing with my mouse and keyboard. They did address that and they did say that players will not be able to control, to be able to change their controller or peripheral in the middle of a match. So once you have chosen it, you are locked into using that peripheral. So I guess that's a good thing at the end of the day for people that wanna play even Steven, but for me that just wants to get in there and wreck noobs on a controller, then I guess that's probably not going to happen except for the few players that do opt in, although I don't really know why they would because they are going to be putting themselves at an extreme disadvantage to playing against someone with a mouse and keyboard. I think as PC gamers, we could all agree upon that. When it comes to first person shooters, the mouse and keyboard is vastly superior. Even with a controller, when they're using something like aim assist, it is never going to be as good, especially in a fast paced game like Call of Duty, where you need to, uh, you know, track movement and things like that. I mean, if someone's just standing still and you can, you know, lock onto them with aim assist really quickly by hitting your left trigger, that's one thing. But if someone's running along, and you need to like track their head with a sniper rifle or anything like that. The mouse and keyboard is just going to wreck all day long. Either way though, I'll still be picking this game up because the gameplay that we have seen so far does look really good. The sounds, the audio, everything, the guns all look really good. So I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out for the campaign as well as the multiplayer, which got its full reveal yesterday. It was revealed they're going to have the 20v20 game mode, which I talked about yesterday. So all that stuff sounds really good. And the 20v20 is actually going to be a domination type game mode, which will have five flags rather than the three that you usually see in domination. So it's kind of sounding almost like conquest from Battlefield with 20v20 on larger maps. How big those maps will be will remain to be seen. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this game coming out. And if you are, let me know down in the comments below. It's not much longer. It's gonna be coming out October 25th and there is going to be a beta for the PC in the middle of September. I can't recall the date off the top of my head, but I believe it was maybe September 17th. If I'm wrong about that, let me know down in the comments below, but it's somewhere around there. I believe you have to pre-order to get into the PC beta, but maybe they'll have an open phase at some point after that. Uh, yeah, but I believe it was September 17th, turn of the 23rd. I don't know why that's those dates were standing out in my mind, but 
Uh, yeah, don't, don't quote me on it, but I think it's around that point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you've been here for a while, don't forget to ring the notification bell. That way you never miss a news video as soon as it goes up live here on the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Ta-ra.